Yes, indeed. The dark sign brands the undead. And in this land, the undead are corralled and led to the north, where they are locked away to await the end of the world. This is your fate. Dark Souls Remastered, first released October 4th of 2011 and brought to Nintendo Switch October of 2018. This is when I got my first taste of a Souls game. Downloading this game on my Nintendo back in 2018, I didn't think much of it. It was just a game I bought to fill time until Smash Ultimate released, but I ended up loving it. So much so, whenever Smash Ultimate did release, I just kept playing Dark Souls. I had set the bird free and now it has returned to me. This time I will try to drain all the possible joy from it by getting every single achievement. What should my guy's name be? Name him anything besides for Doodle Bob. We begin in our cell, with a body and key being pushed in, giving us the ability to escape. This is our tutorial, with short little tips and tricks scattered on the ground all throughout this area. Heading out a little farther, we find our first bonfire and achievement in Kindle. Hey, I already got one. Light a bonfire. These bonfires are where the cursed undead like us respawn every time they die. This is a Dark Souls game, so that will happen a lot. Most bonfires are very far from one another, so when we see one, it is crucial to take advantage of it. And the journey from bonfires to boss arenas is about the same level of difficulty as how our parents got to school as kids. Headed into our first boss fight of the game, we just dip, because one broken sword is not going to cut it. Exploring more throughout the area, we get our mighty sword and shield. We also get the Estus Flask from the same guy who helped free us. Hey, acquiring Estus Flask, I'm on a roll. Estus Flasks are used to heal and will obviously be used a ton. We get five uses with our flask. Visiting bonfires replenishes our uses. There are a few ways to get more than five uses, one being kindling. Kindling can increase the amount of flask uses we get from a bonfire by five for trading in one humanity. But I didn't know that was a thing until now, so I didn't do that at all. Humanity is shown in the top left of our screen and can be used for many things. It is mainly obtained from killing bosses or using it as a consumable. Humanity can increase certain weapon damage increase our defense, and boost our chance of finding rare items, plus a few other things. For those three main ones though, our highest buff will come from having a stack of 10 humanity. Upon death, you will lose all your humanity and can only get it back by making it to your bloodstain before you die. Humanity can also be used to revive our human form. This will allow us to summon phantoms for help during our journey. This is also a thing I did not know, so don't really expect to see any of that. Now we can take on our first boss for real this time. Whoa! He catches me a bit off guard, but for a pro gamer like me, it's just another day in the office. And with that, we can now leave the tutorial area. We go up and catch our Uber to Lordran. Upon arrival, we receive our third achievement, Reach Lordran. For the first time in our run, we can use Souls, our main form of currency and obtained from killing enemies. Used to level up at bonfires, purchase items, upgrade weapons, enhance armor, and repair equipment. Dropped upon death and lost permanently if we die again before reaching our bloodstain. We will be needing a ton of these for later in this run. You also may have noticed that we have 10 flasks now. That is because this bonfire has already been kindled. Three bonfires come pre-kindled. The more kindled, the bigger the flame. This was done by the firekeeper. There are a total of three firekeepers and at each one we can use a firekeeper soul to upgrade how much health our flask gives us. More on that later. Speaking of later, while our first three achievements may have seemed easy, because they are, there are many that are not. I mean, this is a Souls game. In order to get every achievement, I will have to beat the game two and a half times, which for a pro gamer like me, that will be a breeze. But out of all our challenges, these four will be our biggest. On the way to our first real boss fight, we encounter a Black Knight and kill it for the and kill it for the Black Knight sword. This is our main weapon we will use throughout the whole run, once I get my stats high enough. During our first fight with the Taurus Demon, he had urgent plans after the fight and immediately leaves. Bro, I, the, I cheesed him by accident, but I died. I don't know if it counted or not. We run back to defeat him and continue on to the Undead Church. Our first and current goal is to ring the two bells, located in the Undead Church and Quelag's Domain. This will open up our path to the next part of the story. This guy looks, like, hard, but I don't know. I might be able to do this pretty easily. Ah! 
we activate this shortcut to Firelink Shrine, our main area, and then join this guy's covenant. Oh, discover way of white covenant. There are a total of nine covenants. We get an achievement for each one we join for a total of nine achievements. One of these in particular causes us quite a bit of trouble. Bro, I am wearing a person. No fit go crazy. We are almost to our first bell. The only thing in our way is one bell gargoyle. Is two bell gargoyles. We defeat them both to head up and ring our first bell. Ring the bell of awakening at undead church. Oh my gosh, bro. I just did the whole entire boss fight one handing my freaking weapon. Yeah, that's not good. The next bell is located deep underground in Quaylag's domain. Using the basement key found where we fought the big hog, we can start our descent. Hello? What are you doing over here, man? The next boss in our way is the Capra Demon. This fight can be very annoying due to the two dogs in the extra small arena, but we have the best luck ever. Using luck and stairs, we are able to pull out the win and get the key to the depths. Easy, baby. Whooped them. Key to the depths. We now have two more bosses and two more long trips standing in the way of our second bell. Oh! Oh! oh. I get it. I was being bullied. Our next enemy is found in Florida and is an average crocodile. For one of our hardest achievements, we will need to cut off many of the boss's tails, but I didn't know that yet, so I'll do that next time. Killing it lets us continue on with the Blighttown key. We also finally get enough levels to use our Black Knight sword, increasing our damage tremendously. Blighttown is thought to be one of the hardest areas of this whole game. If I had to guess why, I'd say because this happens so often. No. We also have to traverse through stuff like this. <gasps> Honestly, in this game, the process of getting to a boss is harder than the boss fight itself. In total, I died way more traversing than fighting bosses. And this one is no different. We make it to Quaylag and be here quick and easy. That was by far the easiest boss so far. We then ring our final bell. This opens the gate to Sin's Fortress, the worst part of this whole game for me. Remember how I just said getting to a boss is the hardest part of the game? Well, this place is where it is the hardest by far. Ring the bell. Quaylag's domain. I think. That's how you say that. Right under the bell, there is a small area containing another covenant for us to join. Covenant Chaos Servant. This is also one of the three fire keepers. Now with the gate open, it's pretty obvious where we need to go next. That's right, Darkroot Garden. Apparently the cutscene of a giant gate opening was not enough of a sign for me. So now, here we are. Darkroot Garden contains three bosses, two optional and one required for the main story. But since we're getting every achievement, they're all required for us. The first optional is the Hydra, who is not very hard, but super annoying. Due to the fact of his heads being so far and the terrain we are fighting on is just, well, annoying. I had to strip down naked and start pre-sprinting just to hit that final attack. 
the Moonlight Butterfly, the second optional and just a little less annoying than the Hydra. Since I have no ranged weapon, we just sit here and dodge attacks until it finally lands. I mean, he took so long to land, I started checking doors to see if I could just leave during the fight. Luckily, since my weapon is so strong, I only had to endure one cycle of this. Easy peasy, baby. This door is to the main part of the garden and a quick route to our required boss. In order to open it, we need a seal that costs 20,000 souls. But since we didn't want to spend that money, every time we die, we have to run very, very far. In our second playthrough, we buy the seal. Upon finding a strange cat, we are asked to join another covenant. Covenant Forest Hunter. Discover Forest Hunter Covenant. Gotcha. Now one of the saddest boss fights I have ever seen. Sif is protecting her master's grave and fights us to prepare us for our future battles. For one of the later achievements, we will have to kill her a total of three times. This is the only boss we have to kill three times. And I feel that was a little intentional. I mean, look at how they make her limp around when she's almost dead. All this was put in the game just to make us feel worse for what we do. But at least we get a little achievement for it. Art of Abyss Walking. Acquire the Art of Abyss Walking. The Covenant of Artorias is the ring she dropped. This allows us to traverse the abyss necessary for a later fight. We may have just done the story a bit out of the intended order, but that's the great thing about Dark Souls. Now we do the part that was meant to be done before this. The Giant Gate to Sin's Fortress. I think this is probably where I died the most in the whole entire playthrough, and it made me a tiny bit crazy. Because of the fact that I had got so close to outside, it made me try and go as fast as possible through it every time, which just caused more deaths. We finally find this hidden bonfire and our suffering is over, for now. The boss for this area is super easy. He can be staggered, causing him to fall over. By the time he's starting to get back up, he's already dead. You can also do this near the edge, and when he staggers, he will fall off to his death. Another thing I didn't know until now. Examining the ring light calls us another Uber, this time to An Orlando. Oh. Reach Anor Londo. This is also where we find the third and final Firekeeper. The hardest part of getting to the bosses in An Orlando is just figuring out the path. My first time playing, I was on this part for a while just because I thought if I jumped on this, I would slide off and die. Golly. This place is crazy. These bow guys are also a pain, but quick to figure out. The boss fight here is pretty unique. It is two bosses, Ornstein and Smo. When one of them dies, the other will absorb the power of the dead. Depending on who you kill first can greatly change the difficulty of this fight, as Smo is much easier in his second phase than Ornstein. In order for all achievements, our next playthrough will have to find Ornstein second in order to get his unique items as well. Dang. Oh, he's fine. He's just sleeping. After this fight, we get an amazing reward. Oh, nice kill shot there. Holy crap. The Lord Vessel. Acquire the Lord Vessel. We also can join her covenant for another achievement. Covenant Princess's Guard. The Lord Vessel gives us the ability to teleport from bonfire to bonfire. Story time, this is Frampt. He brings us to place down the Lord Vessel given to us by Guinevere and used to open this giant door. Guinevere wants us to go there so we can kill the final boss and link the fire, continuing the Age of Fire. Or we can do what Frampt wants and kill the final boss, then not link the fire, becoming the Dark Lord. Each of these endings will grant us an achievement, so both will be done. In order to open the door though, we need to offer four Lord Souls to the Lord Vessel. Three of these Lord Souls were locked behind the Golden Fog walls, which unlocked once the Lord Vessel was placed down. The four Lord Souls are all located within a boss. Those bosses being the Bed of Chaos, the Four Kings, Seat the Skeletus, and Gravelord Nito. Our first target and found deep within the catacombs is Gravelord Nito. But before Nito, we have one of the hardest fights yet, Pinwheel. Because of the fact that Pinwheel is able to make copies of himself, this makes this fight... Oh, never mind, it's over. Yeah, I think I was supposed to be here a long time ago. Oh, acquire Rite of Kindling. After that very hard-fought battle, we are rewarded with our 13th achievement and the Rite of Kindling. 
This allows us to kindle bonfires a total of four times for 20 flask, which we don't ever do. We have now made it below the catacombs to the Tomb of Giants where Nido is located. This area is not very hard because it is quite small, but it is annoying. In order to see, you always have to carry a lantern, which you find after this guy kicks you in a ditch. We also have to kill him for his weapon. It was required for an achievement, not because I wanted to. Oh my gosh. Where are he going? Oh, that's where. Nito is one of my favorite looking bosses by far. His design is just so unique and perfect for him. The boss fight itself is quite simple. There are a few skeletons other than him in there. Kill them with a divine weapon and then focus on him. The solo fight with him is quite easy due to his small selection of attacks. But, once again I learned something while editing this video. While I was playing, I did not know divine weapons would permakill skeletons. So I would just deal with them and hope Nito would hit them every now and then. We eventually take them down for our first of our four needed Lord Souls. <sighs> Defeat Gravelord Nito. Heading through where the Golden Fog Wall used to be and towards our second Lord Soul held by Seath. Located in the Duke's Archive. This boss fight is a bit strange. The first time you encounter him, you actually cannot hurt him. So you either die or use a homeward bone to teleport to a bonfire. So we just die. You wake up locked up and have to kill this guy to get your key out. Once out, we have to get another key guarded by a bunch of these things. Don't worry, brother. Stick with me, I'll get you out of here alive. This could have been a bad idea, bro. Let's head this way. I gotta leave you behind. Using the key to get out and head into the crystal caves for our rematch with Seath. Also a little tip, don't attack the moonlight butterflies here with only a melee weapon. I don't think they'll ever land. Looking back on this part, I feel kind of dumb not to notice the giant glowing light to hit, but seeing the damage numbers pop up kind of threw me off. Okay, is my game glitching? Eventually I realize it and break it to start doing damage to Seath. This grants us our second of the four required Lord Souls. Hey, defeat Seath the Skeless. Achievement unlocked. We now make our way down to New Lando Ruins to fight the four kings. Ah! Ah! Oh my gosh. This is the only Lord Soul that can be gotten before placing the Lord Vessel, which we will have to do in a later run to get an achievement. The main enemy in this area is a ghost. They can hit us and block our path, but we can't hit them. That's some good souls logic for you. Well, actually we can hit them by using an item known as a transient curse. But, believe it or not, that's another thing I'm just now learning. In order to get to the four kings, we have to drain all the water in this area. Luckily, this random guy has a key just for that. With that key, we can now access the lever to drain the water. This is where we equip our ring gotten by Sif. Without it, there would be no way to get down here. And it must stay on the whole time we're here. Ah, this is scary. <laughs> the four kings spawn in each after a certain amount of time passes and sharing one health bar. I'm coming for you. This fight is more of a DPS check than anything. <laughs> if you don't kill them fast enough, more than likely you will lose. Hey, defeat the four kings, achievement unlocked, let's go. With only the bed of chaos left, we make our way to the demon ruins. Holy crap. This area is basically a boss rush. We have to fight four bosses here with very short walks in between them. Because of how close they were, I kept thinking each boss would be the bed of chaos. The first in this area is ceaseless discharge. If you lure him near where we enter, he will set down his hand, which you can start to hit and insta-kill him. Where are you going, dude? I'm over here. Bro's just leaving. He's like, ah, oh, boss fight over. I ain't finna die. 
but you see if you haven't figured it out by now that's something I just learned so we do it the other way but even without the trick he's not too hard killing him causes all the lava to drain so we can move on to our next fight look at this big old centipede type guy Oh my gosh, I thought he was going to be nice to me. Yeah, I guess I was stupid to think that. I feel kind of stupid thinking that he was going to be nice to me, honestly. Demon Fire Sage is our next boss. He is basically the tutorial boss, but you just set him on fire. Except, I didn't notice the fire doing anything. I just ran under him the whole fight and he wasn't able to hit me once. Zero hits! This walk is like one minute from the boss fight before. I don't know if they were just trying something new in this area or what, but there is not many enemies and a ton of boss fights. Which I really enjoyed. This was definitely my favorite area to play. The Centipede Demon. This fight is not bad if you figure out the trick. The arena is covered in lava, so in order to do damage, you have to lure it onto land. Using this big piece of land tucked away back here, we get plenty of room to dodge and do damage. The demon drops the orange charred ring, which allows us to walk on lava and take very little damage, making our path to chaos open. Too bad I didn't think to check what the ring did sooner. Oh my gosh, dude. This is stupid for no reason. I mean, I killed the boss, make the lava go away so I can get my stupid souls. You can bet your bottom dollar I'm gonna try it. Okay, then how the frick do I get there? Bro, I had a freaking ring that reduced lava damage. Now I feel bad. Sorry for yelling at you, game. The Bed Up Chaos has the most unique fight in this whole game. It's more like a type of fight you would see in a Mario game than a Souls game. In order to kill Chaos, you have to hit these roots within the glowing ring. When you approach them, Chaos does a huge sweeping motion to try to knock you back. After breaking the first one, the arena gets damaged. Breaking the second one makes it even more damaged and opens up the path to the third, where I struggled quite a bit. Oh my gosh. Finally making it through, we find a bug. Hitting the bug, which is thought to be the Witch of Chaos, destroys the bed and grants us our final Lord Soul. What a weird boss fight. Defeat Bed of Chaos. We head back to deposit the Lord Souls and find Framped sleeping on the job. That scared me. I did not want to hit him. <sighs> I thought it was going to like mess my game up. By depositing the four Lord Souls, we are able to access the final area. Kiln of the First Flame. I really enjoyed the way this area looks and think it made for a great final area. But only containing a few black knights and a short trip to the boss, I wish it was a bit larger. You also may have noticed we have 20 flask. That is because the Lord Vessel is the only place that comes pre-kindled all the way. Gwyn, Lord of Cinder and our final fight. He is the father of Guinevere and one of the strongest beings. He fits perfectly in this arena and is such a cool and quite a difficult boss fight. Until you figure out how weak he is to parries. GG's, brother. That's why you learn how to parry. Hey, 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 hey. Headed over, we can kindle the flame and get our first ending.
To link the fire, reach to link the fire ending. Yes, sir. Oh my gosh. Bro. It immediately starts New Game Plus? Yeah. I thought in order to start New Game Plus, we would have to click on a bonfire and select it or something. Because I still had a ton of stuff needed to be done in that playthrough. But, too late now. During this run, there are a few things that can be missed and must be done for achievements. Those three involve killing the four kings before placing down the lord vessel, completing some of the NPC side quests, and killing the correct bosses in the correct ways for knight's honor. Other than those, we can proceed like normal and do achievement cleanup before killing Gwyn. So we're off. We ring the bells, get the Lord Vessel, place the Lord Vessel, oh, yeah, so I was trying to do everything a little too fast, and now I'll have to get that achievement in the third run. Knight's Honor is obtained by getting all rare weapons. Boss souls are dropped by bosses and used to make specific rare weapons. In order to get all the weapons, I have to re-kill certain bosses, including some that I did not last time. The first being Ornstein. In order to get his soul, we must defeat Smo first, then kill Ornstein in his second phase, which is pretty easy. Oh my gosh. Let's go! Another rare weapon that can be missed is gotten by tail cutoffs. Five enemies have tails that when cut off during battle, we are rewarded with a rare weapon. If we kill them before cutting off their tail, we miss that weapon this run. Our first target is Crossbreed Priscilla. She is found within the giant painting in An Orlando. In order to enter, we need the peculiar doll found back where we first spawned. Going up to the bird's nest in Firelink Shrine and waiting calls our favorite Uber driver back for a ride to the tutorial area. Walking all the way back to the cell we first started in is where we find the doll. Now, with the doll in our inventory, when we examine the painting, we are transported into the painted world of Aramis and home of Priscilla. Getting to her is easy enough. We take a path with a bunch of dead ends and only one successful route. This puts us in the main area where we can open up this shortcut. From the shortcut, we take a left to go down a well. Pull the lever and the path to her is a straight shot from the bonfire. Before our fight with her, we do grab a few items needed for achievements. Approaching her, she is not hostile until we attack. But, for all achievements, this must be done. With one heavy attack, we are able to get the rare weapon from her tail. Her unique ability allows her to turn invisible. This can easily be countered though by watching her footsteps on the ground. After enough damage is dealt, she becomes visible again. And at this point, the fight is basically over. Defeat Crossbreed Priscilla. In order to return home, we jump off of this bridge. Sing with me! Sing for the year, sing for the left, and sing for the tear. The four other tails we cut off are the Gaping Dragon, Seat the Skeletus. I iron this, I'm taking it with me. The Hellkite Dragon, which if you're using a bow and arrow, took me about five minutes straight of shooting his tail. Finally! <sighs> I didn't even think it was possible. And the Stone Dragon. The stone dragon is a bit different than the others. It is not actually a boss and won't attack us. In order to find the stone dragon, you will head left from the bonfire at Blighttown and into the tree. We go through two hidden walls into the Great Hollow and make our way down to find Ash Lake. This is one of my favorite looking places in the whole game. Running down the only path and avoiding the Hydra. Oh my gosh! We finally make it to the stone dragon. Speaking to him, we are able to join his covenant. Path of the dragon and then politely swipe our final tail needed. Thank you for letting me join your covenant. Now I'm also gonna be needing this. This actually does not upset him, so no need to worry. Heading back to Undead Parish and running under where the dragon stays, we find this bonfire. To the side, we find a destroyed statue and another covenant. Covenant Warrior of Sunlight. Back into the catacombs, we find an open coffin. We take a quick nap inside and wake up to Nito. Oh wow, I can join this guy's thing? Just to kill him later? Eye of Death has a 6% chance to drop from Bolisk. After some time of farming, we finally find 10. Offering these 10 to Nito, we get a miracle needed for a later achievement. During our first playthrough, we completely missed Dark Sun Gwendolyn. Found at the very bottom of An Orlando and accessible by two ways. 
killing Guinevere or equipping the Dark Moon Seance Ring found in the catacombs. This removes this statue and lets us make our way down. Blade of the Dark Moon. Heading into the painted world, we farm these bird things for souvenir of reprisals. After 10, we can turn them in for another required miracle. Then we decide to kill the guy. This is another one of those annoying but easy fights. We just run, hide behind pillars, and run. When we finally make it to him, we can get one or two swings off before he teleports away. Repeat this process until he's dead. Oh, heretic, swathed in dark, an eternal curse upon thee. Defeat the Dark Sun Gwendolyn. We head down the rest of the hallway to find a chest with the required miracle. Now it is time to start hunting for the final items to complete these big achievements. In order to complete these, I must find all 23 miracles, 19 pyromancies, and 24 sorceries. I will not show many of the ones that I found on the ground, but mainly the ones I got by doing specific tasks like NPC quest. There are many NPCs located throughout the world. You can choose to interact with them, ignore them, or kill them. Uh, we needed this guy's sword. By completing their quest, we normally get something from them or they become a merchant where we can purchase items. I had to do all these quests in our second run because I didn't pay enough attention to them the first time. The first quest we seek out is Big Hat Logan. We first find him in Sin's Fortress locked in a cage. Upon freeing him, we find him locked up again in Duke's Archive. Oh, that's not where you want a sword to go. Near where he is locked up, there is two enemies. Upon death, they will each drop a miracle. Once free, he will move to the library in Duke's archive, where we can buy sorceries from him. After we purchase all the sorceries he offers, he moves to where we first fight Seath, and then challenges us to a battle. What does bro have on? After killing him, his quest is officially over. Killing the Hydra in Darkroot Forest causes a golden golem to spawn in the cave nearby. Killing the golem frees this woman, who teleports beside the lake. Talking to her again, she sells us more sorceries. By joining this Firekeeper's Covenant and offering up 30 humanity, we get a pyromancy. While here, we head out and let one of these things attack us. Eventually, we will start to scratch our head and grow an egg on it. Talking to this guy afterwards, he will now sell two pyromancies. In the giant's tomb, where we are pushed into the hole, we can find this woman. Talking to her, she asks for protection from two of her friends who have become hollowed. After we kill them and talk to her again, she will be found selling miracles in Undead Parish. Opening this door in Undeadburg, we can find a man. After talking to him, he will move to Firelink Shrine. Talking to him there, we can buy our final sorceries. Wisdom of a Sage, acquire all sorceries. Perfect. By killing these little bugs in the demon ruins, we get sunlight medals. Taking 10 medals to the statue gives us a miracle. We can also trade in the soul we got from killing the final boss, Gwen, receiving our final miracle. And then doing this, offering the soul, the miracle sunlight spear, boom. Acquire all miracles. Let's go. Let's go! By upgrading our pyromancy flame high enough, this woman will sell us more pyromancies. Afterwards, she will ask us to defeat the bed of chaos to free her sisters. Returning to her, we get our final pyromancy. Hey! Acquire all pyromancies. Let's go. Now with those big ones out of the way, we started grinding the weapons for Knight's Honor. Almost all of these had a 1% drop chance and that became obvious very quickly. This was by far the worst part of this run as the game had just become a farming simulator. All my sanity was being drained from farming so long. Yes! And I almost died too. Holy crap. Oh my gosh! That scared the crap out of me. I just want you for my own More than you will ever know and I wish I had a lover that could hold me Now I'm crying in my room To keep me from harm Put your hand in my hand and Oh! Yes! Ooga shaka, ooga, ooga, ooga shaka Ooga shaka, ooga, ooga, ooga shaka Ooga shaka, ooga, ooga, ooga shaka Come on now. 
That's what I'm talking about right there, boy. There are a total of 10 weapon types. With each weapon we max out using a specific type, we get a new achievement for a total of 10 achievements. In order to change to these types, we need embers. Embers are found randomly throughout the world and are required to be brought to a specific blacksmith. Three blacksmiths are found within the world and one guy locked in a cage. Each of these people can only use specific embers, meaning we will have to upgrade our weapons to that type at the correct people. In order to upgrade the weapon, we will need shards and chunks of the correct type plus some souls. For the final upgrade, we will need a slab of the corresponding type and souls. There is five different types of slabs, chunks, and shards we will need. These can be found from enemies all over the world with the slabs being very rare. The five types being titanite, red, blue, white, and green. Now to the upgrades. The raw weapon, done at any blacksmith with 10 large titanite shards, no ember required. Normal weapon, done at Andre with 9 titanite shards, 9 large titanite shards, 9 titanite chunks, and 1 titanite slab, using the large and very large ember. Lightning, done at Andre with 9 titanite chunks and 1 titanite slab, no ember required. Crystal, done at Andre with 9 titanite chunks and 1 titanite slab using the crystal ember. Divine, done at Vamos with 10 green shards, 9 white chunks, and 1 white slab using the divine and large ember. Occult, done at Andre with 10 green shards, 8 white chunks, and 1 white slab using the dark ember. Magic, done at Rickert with 10 green shards, 9 blue chunks, and 1 blue slab using the large magic ember. Enchanted, done at Andre with 10 green shards, 8 blue chunks, and 1 blue slab using the enchanted ember. Fire, done at Vamos with 11 green shards, 9 red chunks, and 1 red slab using the large flame ember. And finally, Chaos, done at Vamos with 11 green shards, 8 red chunks, and 1 red slab using the Chaos Flame Ember. With all this done, we are ready to end our second playthrough. We head to Gwyn and start parrying. This time after his defeat, we leave and do not link the fire. This is what Framp wanted us to do and we get the Dark Lord ending. Serve your highness. We are here to serve your highness. Dark Lord. Headed into our final playthrough, we have two things required. Kill Sif and Gwendolyn for their boss souls, and do not place down the Lord Vessel before fighting the Four Kings. If we do this, we would have to beat the whole game for a third time and part of a fourth run. So we ring the bells, go get the Lord Vessel, kill Sif and Gwendolyn, and use all of our boss souls. In order to be used, boss souls require a specific weapon to be at plus 10. For example, to use the Golem Soul, we need an axe to be at plus 10. This allows us to craft the Golem Axe. We finish using all of our boss souls and craft our final rare weapon to get the achievement. Yeah, so for some reason the achievement didn't pop here. I didn't know if this was a glitch or what. I read online and checked every weapon and I had all the requirements completed. But I was too close now to give up. I went ahead and brushed it off and continued for the last remaining ones. Finally, we remember not to put down the Lord Vessel and start our fight with the Four Kings. Upon completion, since we do not have the Lord Vessel down, a serpent will show up known as Kaith. He takes us to put down the Lord Vessel, which made me panic. Did I just mess up, or...? I do not put down the Lord Vessel and head back to speak to him again. Once here, we are finally able to join his covenant. Covenant Dark Wraith. Boom. Acquire all rare weapons and acquire all achievements completed. Knight's Owner and the Dark Soul. We are dying. <sighs> we finally have all our achievements, and honestly, I don't know why Knight's Honor popped right here, but I'm very glad it did. In my head, I thought I would have to get every single weapon again. To end the game, I take out a little built up anger on the worm for what he did to me. I had a great time revisiting this game and think I got my fill of it for now. If you enjoyed, please be sure to like and subscribe as I have more videos already on the way. Thank you so much for watching and peace.